everyone, this is Emmanuel, and we're here at Gen Con 2019. I'm here with the, the boss of Cubicle 7. How did this get, first of all, where did the theme Cubicle 7 come from? Um, uh, it was the, uh, we've got many, many different variations of this. Um, the, uh, um, it's the, um, the toilet stall where the idea came. <laughs> 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 uh, no, no, it's um, it, it's a uh, a suitably enigmatic name. Uh, we will never tell. <laughs> well, uh, how long has this company been been formed? So uh, the company was formed in two thousand and six, December two thousand and six, um, and uh, yeah, which is I, I don't know, I haven't counted how long is that? Twelve years, thirteen years, something like that. And, so, and where did he uh, like? Why did you decide to form a company for role playing games? So uh, my friend Angus, um, who'd worked in games retail for a, a long time, had been coming to get to uh, Gen Con um, as a buyer uh, for, for Leisure Games in London. Fantastic store, check it out. Um, the, uh, so he'd, he'd kind of like seen this, all this amazing um, world that goes on over here. I mean, for me, um, Gen Con was this like fabled land from adverts in the back of Dragon magazine. Um, I, you know, I never thought that I'd, I'd even get to visit, you know, let alone come and be a publisher here. Um, so uh, the, I, I um, looked at various times that you know applying for, for certain things. So the um, Games Workshop uh, trainee games designer um, track that they have and things like that. But I'd never really kind of like seen it as um, in, in, enough of a career, I suppose, as well. So you know that kind of um, yeah, be, being young and you got all these opportunities and you know which, which are the ones that you want to pursue. So. Um, uh, so I think you know it was uh, Angus having seen all this stuff and talking about you know that actually there are there are real role playing game companies that you know out there making a go of it and uh, kind of um, seeing that as a possibility for the first time and being very excited by that and uh, yeah been a you know a gamer since well I don't know how old as long as I could <laughs> since I could pick up dice I guess. <laughs> so so what 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 are you showcasing today? So um, the I would say that the, the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay starter set um, is a fantastic place to start. Um, it's a um, fantastic package. You've got um, designed to get you playing as quickly as possible. So you've got the, the initial adventure that teaches you the rules. Uh, you've got lovely um, character portfolios that tell you about your character and uh, how, um, some some um, secrets about. Who can read that? You can uh, you can decide which ones are going to be the ones which which define your character. So there's um, good personalization there. Um, takes you through a very entertaining um, and horrible grisly uh, first adventure, uh, and then there's loads of adventure seeds and um, and also a setting book for a town in the empire. Uh, so th there's so much gaming in that starter set. It'll keep you going for ages. Well, I love the fact, uh, I love Middle-earth. I love the books that you've put out. No, thank you. Um, thank you. As someone has been trying to play Middle-earth for maybe 25 years uh, with different systems, that is definitely my favorite of all time. You know, my, my group loves it. We're still in the middle of Mirkwood, uh, oh, the Mirkwood Adventures. Yeah. We're, trying to, we're trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where did the idea come from for like, hey, let's take the One Ring mm. r system and then expand it to 5e? Yeah. Well, the I mean, the One Ring w has been a tremendous success for us. It's been you know absolutely fantastic. Um, but we were still hearing um, a lot of people saying, you know, I love the One Ring, but my group plays D and D. You know, my, my group doesn't really want to have to get their head around a whole new rule system. Um, and quite, you know, I, I have absolute sympathy for that. You know, I think that there's you know, it's a very busy world out there. Um, and uh, yeah, so when the um, the the uh, open the, the OGL was announced for fifth edition. It just seemed like the perfect opportunity to, to bring all that great stuff that we've made for the One Ring um, and bring it to a, a much wider audience. Um, and yeah, so that the, 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 the GMs who were hugging their One Ring books would, would finally be able to bring it to the table for their group. Are you finding a lot of like crossover success? So crossover meaning that people that get into the Middle Earth books suddenly are curious now about the One Ring books? And vice versa. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. One, um, uh, which was kind of what I'd hoped would happen, really. That I think you know, once people see um, uh, the, the quality of the, um, the, the, the the adventures and the the setting material, um, and experience that um, with Five E with the Adventures of Middle Earth range, um, that they would think, oh, okay. Well, what's what's the where this where did this come from? Um, what's the system like that's here? Because we we designed that from the ground up. To, um, to really feel like the books and capture the feel of the books. 
um, yeah, what, what's that? What's that system going to be like to play? And we did. We saw uh, it was um, something like a twenty percent increase um, on the One Ring. Um, we got a, a really, yeah, it was it was awesome. It was really great to see. Um, and, and, and you know that they then people move back and forwards between the two. I think depending on what their group they're playing with that week and what what kind of uh, what kind of feel of game that they they want to be going for. Oh, excellent. So. What's next? What what what's the next thing that uh, do you see Cubicle Seven heading towards? So there's loads at the moment. So we've got the uh, the new edition of the One Ring, uh, which will be um, launching in a few months, um, which is fantastic. It's really um, uh, great to be. We we um, we've kind of come full circle. Originally, we were going to uh, we were looking at the One Ring as a trilogy um, of kind of like core um, core books, really. Um, the and then we'd have different sort of like timeline for each of them. That you'd move through the timeline, um, and then and then uh, I think with the the reaction to the One Ring was 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 so good that actually it seemed like a little it seemed like um, uh, what's the word uh, the that there weren't enough rule changes based on feedback to the first uh, uh, the first rule book that we put out that putting it into another core product. Basically, simple, like, it felt like selling the same thing twice. <laughs> so we changed plan. We're right, okay, no, we've got a rule set that, that's, that's very solid and works. We don't need another edition to update it. Um, so uh, we, we carried on just with, with a supplement um, plan. We, we just did the region source books and the adventures uh, instead, which is great. So, uh, but now we're eight years on from that. Um, and, you know, Francesco, who's our, our rules designer, Francesco and uh, Francesco Nepotello and Marco Maggi, um, they've got some new things that they want to try out. I think that having Adventures of Middle Earth out there as well has, has made us think about some things in different ways. Uh, so it's time now for a, a true new edition. So, so we've gone a little bit back to that original plan. We've got the, the second edition, which also moves the timeline on and moves us geographically further south. So we're taking the focus down to Gondor, um, going to Minas Tirith, and uh, yeah, lots of good stuff to do around there. So I thought they are going to be pretty busy for a while. Oh. See, that's one thing. Um, <laughs> we also um, announced a few months ago that we uh, we now have the uh, the Warhammer 40,000 license. So uh, we're working on uh, the the um, our edition of the the Wrath and Glory, Wrath and Glory core rulebook, um, which we're um, making a few changes to and um, just basically bring it into the Cubicle Seven style, and that should be out in a few months. Okay. Um, then we've got loads of supplements planned for that. So that's going to be very exciting. Um, wow. The, uh, we also got the Age of Sigma role-playing game, which will be releasing um, March, April next year. Okay. So uh, I don't know how much you've seen of the Age of Sigma setting. It's absolutely yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be taking some B-roll of that, so I can show our viewers what the, the amount of, of work you guys put into that. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's coming together really nicely, but there's just so much to work with. It, it's um, it's, a, it's a, such a fantastic setting. I mean, the um, everybody seems to have their sort of like their. Uh, their moment of Age of Sigma, kind of. Um, I think for me, well, I think that the um, yeah the character on Overlords. When I saw those airships coming out for the first time, I was like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's it's. Um, I've been describing it like the mother of all creation myths. It's just so epic in scale, but also like so um, uh, different to a lot of stuff that's out there. You know, you've got the um, uh, was it the city where. As, uh, as currency, they use shards of prophecy. Um, and just some really interesting ideas they're bringing into it. It's just been fantastic. I think every new thing they bring out has just made it better and better. Um, well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, thank you. Uh, where can they find more of these products online? Uh, so if you go to cubicle7games.com, uh, and then you have uh, our website and uh, our web store as well. Um, yeah, so uh, no, that's good. And we, we've got... Um, Warehouses in the U.S. as uh, well in Europe, as well as in Europe. So uh, we have local distribution centers. So, uh, well, thank you for thank you very much. Thank you. And stay tuned for more stuff.